The Sims 4 Realm of Magic trailer premiered today, only after an excruciating wait of 24 hours. If you thought that was hard, you will not be super happy to hear it'll be September 10th before you can explore the new pack. If you're on console, well, sorry, you'll have to wait until October 15th. This was really the first time I know of Maxis using YouTube's premiere feature to build up some hype. Almost 30,000 people were watching when the trailer debuted. On a day like this, the gurus are very active, so let's go over everything we learned from the trailer and our Sims-focused Twitter scouring to give you some of the latest info. Bear with me on this, the trailer is only one minute long, so I have a lot more info than I have footage, but I promise you will be thoroughly in the know when we're done. First, yes, we are getting witches, wizards, or however you'd like to term it. The game uses wizardry or spellcasting. The page we got from EA specifically states that Sims will collect spells, so hopefully it's not a 10 level skill that unlocks every spell for each level, but something that encourages some exploration. That's a positive, but a negative is that we already know spellcaster is a life state and only casters can use magic. So this means you'd need a mod in order to make a vampire wizard or mermaid, and that is annoying me. Does this bother you? Share your thoughts with us. Spellcasting ability is possible to be passed on by birth through the magical bloodline trait, or you can just make one and cast. Alternatively, you can ask one of the three sages for the right of ascension. Teens and up can cast spells, but it's been confirmed there's a bit for children to discover, but we don't know what yet. Wands and brooms are not just visual effects, but actual physical objects you can store in a display case or hang on a wall. You can purchase different brooms, and once in your inventory, you'll be able to make it your preferred method of travel. This is such an early stage, but the gurus are always there to add some extra info, and this time a couple of them have lost their minds and turned into owls and dragons. Sim Guru Nick, or Darkwing, confirmed a spellcaster charge like a mana system. He's also on here role-playing a dragon while I type, and he's either ready for a break from game dev or is trying to give us clues about learning magic and ancient wisdom from familiars. Before we move on to that, they did state that this is very similar to the progression for vampires, probably more specifically in that there are ranks of casters, which makes a lot more of sense given the lore it's based off of. We do see familiars briefly in the trailer and also in the pack's art. We got some other kind of cool confirmation that if you own pets, you can have your pet designated as a familiar and that you can have as many familiars bound to your sim as you want, but can only have one summoned at a time. The other familiars are protection against death and kind of follow you around like this streaming drone from Get Famous. Pets will sparkle and we know that they can be sent to forage for ingredients for potions. But for the pack specific familiars, we don't know all about abilities or if they'll just be VFX that hover around your sim and make cute noises. They can apparently help to protect you and will help with spell casting energy management somehow. All in all, it sounds like they add passive bonuses to your sim. There are spells and potions in the pack. Three classifications of magic, practical, mischief, and untamed for a total of 24 different spells to play with, the most of any Sims magic pack. There are a total of 15 different potions coming from a fourth alchemy branch along with curses that may need to be dispelled. It would appear you need magical ingredients probably to make the potions, and there are new plants you can collect to help you brew them. Spells and potion recipes you've learned will be tracked in a spell book. Hopefully with both spells and potions there are a wide variety of unique effects that are not just plus two flirty bonuses. It is my opinion, and I'm sure you share it, this pack relies on a strong magic system to not suck. There are kind of two new worlds in this pack, confirmed by ever charming Sim Guru Romeo. It's a really one world with two neighborhoods. Neighborhood 1 is Glimmerbrook, where you will be able to live and move your sims in. It has 5 lots. Ugh. Cross through the portal after completing some time at quest, cast a spell, or use one of the Glimmer Stones unique to spellcasters, and you'll reach Neighborhood 2, which is the Magic Realm. This has one huge lot you will need to edit with the bb.enable free build sheet. This is where you'll find the three sages and can earn the ability to be a spellcaster. 
Glimmer Book supports The Sims 4 Seasons, but The Realm of Magic does not. It does have its own custom day and night cycle, though. While it's kind of unclear, we got confirmation that Sims will not autonomously cast spells outside the magic world. Players can use spells anywhere, but as for NPCs, does this mean Glimmerbrook or both? So far, we're leaning only Magic Realm, and that's kind of a bummer. I'll clarify that if we find out more. All in all, we kind of need population controls and options for these things because to some people this is a plus, but not always, and to some people it's a minus, but not always. Controls make everyone happier. I didn't intend to go off on a side rant. People want supernaturals, but the problem of requiring the player to set up the scenario grows deeper the more you add. That's what I think anyway. How do you all feel about this stuff? I mean, if you say mods, I say what about console players? Would anyone think of the poor console players? There will be a total of two new aspirations to pursue in this pack. We also see a lot of new stuff in the trailer like the wands, cloaks, and celestial dresses and other wizard clothing, along with new facial tattoos and triple earrings. They say they put in time and effort to make sure players will be able to customize the appearance of their spellcaster. There's a cauldron, no doubt, used to help with potion making, but you can also cook with it. It's a replacement for stoves, and it does work off the grid. This was a frantic afternoon, so toss me a like if you liked what I did here, and I'll try to keep doing it. I want to be a reliable source for the big news when I can muster the patience to rewrite a script like three times. Anyway, I hope you found this useful, and thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping out. It's helped me get new equipment to make these videos a little quicker which saves me some energy.